All right, we're going to start modal logic and talk about a couple natural deductive rules. So with modal logic, we're going to use the same syntax as propositional logic and predicate logic, but we're going to add two new operators. And these respectively are called box and diamond. And they work a lot just like for all and uh, for each or there exists. So the box is a stronger version of the diamond. Now, depending on what area of philosophy you're looking at, these boxes and diamonds will have different meanings. So for example, uh, in one interpretation, you can think of the box as meaning necessary and the diamond as meaning possibly. So you might want to say, well, if something is necessarily true for some proposition A, then it would be possibly true. But you might not want to say if something is possibly true, then it's necessarily true. Uh, you could also think of these in a different way as the box, say, meaning must, while the diamond means may, so necessity versus um, permission. And in that case, it might not make sense to say that if it's necessarily A, then it's possibly A. Uh, you might see people argue for it or against it, depending on which philosophy you're looking at. But not all of the theorems will make sense in every system, depending on what you're looking at or what you're studying. So here's how we can use it. Uh, if we have some well-formed some well formed formula alpha, then we can make a new formula called box alpha. And if alpha is a formula, we can make a new formula called diamond alpha. So how this would look, let's say we have P and Q, we could make a new formula by putting a box in front of it. Or let's say we had something fancier, like if we had box P arrow Q, and then we had arrow R, we could create a new well-formed formula by encompassing that with a diamond. So possibly if necessarily if P then Q, then R. Kind of a mouthful, but we can interpret this. So let's take a look at system K. Uh, system K is the first system we're going to look at uh, in natural deduction. And how this works is it includes all of our previous deductions or so theorems or axioms or rules. And we have two more. So these are box elimination and box introduction, also known as box out and box in, depending on the book you look at. So the way that this works is suppose that we have a proof of box A. So we know that box A is true. What we can do is we can introduce a box subproof, and then anything with a box in front of it, we can put into that box subproof. And how I want you to think about this is this is a box that basically says in all worlds, and if you don't like the term worlds, you can think about all situations, A would be true. So we can introduce a box to say, well, what if we had a new world? So world two, for example. Well, we know that box A has to be true, or box A is true, so A is going to be true in all worlds, therefore we can make this deduction. So this line right here would be our box elimination. Now, that doesn't mean that we can just stick A out front in the main proof. No, we can't do that. It's only going to be in the subgroup there. And we also have box introduction. So let's say we haven't proved anything yet, but in a box subproof, somehow we got to A. So what we can do from this is we can say, well, in all worlds here in our box, A is going to be true because we've deduced that. Therefore, we can claim that box A is going to be true in the main world. So this would be an example of box introduction. So how you can think about this is that you can remove boxes and subgroups, and then you can gain boxes when you leave those subgroups. It's a lot like a CP, a uh, conditional proof. For example, uh, if you have P, and somehow you get Q, you can pull out the P arrow Q. It's pretty similar. But what we can't do is just take P out of it. We can't just claim P. So we want to see these two rules in action. But first, we just need to make a note here. The reiteration is important because imagine we have a proof like this that we just start with A. And we want to ask ourselves, well, what happens in all worlds, in the necessary worlds? Well, <laughs> We don't know if A is true in every single world out there. So we cannot just take A inside of our box subproof. The only thing that can go inside our box subproof is anything with a box in front of it. So if we have box A arrow B, like let's say that was here, box A arrow B, then what we could do is we can say, okay, we have a box in front of it. Therefore, we can now take A arrow B and put it into our subproof. So 
that's what we can do. We can still use reiteration in other cases. So if you have A and then you assume B, putting A back in is just fine. But it's a different situation with the box proofs. So here's an example proof. Let's show that box P and box Q entails box P and Q. What this is saying is that if P is necessary and Q is necessary, then P and Q is necessary together. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we have our first line, which is our assumption. What I wanna do just like any other proof is separate the box P and box Q with and elimination. So I will write these out. So this comes from one and elimination and this other one comes from one and elimination. Now we wanna get a box out front of P and Q. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're going to start a new subproof. And I'll make this look just a little bit nicer so we can use that tool. So we can introduce a box and we can ask ourselves, okay, how are all these necessary worlds gonna work out? Well, we know from two, box P is true, so necessarily P. So we can put P into our sub box proof or our box sub proof. So that's going to be from two and this is going to be box elimination. This is not reiteration, this is box elimination. And then in line six, we can take Q and do the same thing. So this is from three, this is box elimination as well. And now we can conjoin these together to get P and Q. So this is five, six, and introduction. It's gonna be line seven. And then on line eight, uh, we can just make this go a little bit longer. And now we can pull out our box. So we've shown that what are the necessary things? That's what we're asking in line four. And then in line seven, we're saying, well, we found that P and Q together are necessary. So we can pull that out and then say necessarily P and Q. So this is from four to seven, and this is box introduction. So that's how we can do this one proof. But let's take a look at a proof that requires more than one assumption and just see if anything changes. And nothing's really gonna change. So we don't have anything to do because we're living in a box world. We need to show that these three things prove box R. We have to prove a box at the end. So the only logical thing that I could see is if we start a subproof. So let's start a boxed world as a subproof. Let's assume that. In fact, let's do that in green just so we know it's different from our assumptions. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do, as always, is just take everything with boxes and shove it in because these are necessarily true in all worlds, so we can include one, two, and three in our subproof. So we'll take P or Q, we'll take P arrow R, remember we're moving the boxes now, and then we're doing Q arrow R. So this is from one, two, and three, and these are all going to be box elimination. So I'll try to make this look as box-like as I can. Uh, sometimes I turn into circles when I write fast. Okay, so now everything inside is just gonna be the same as before. We're just trying to get to R, so that way, what we can do at the end is we can pull out box R using box introduction. That's what we want, which means from the back, we wanna get R at the end. So how do we do this? Well, we need to start two subproofs. Uh, this might get a little messy. We'll have to redo some of the bottom ones, but this is just to show you where I want to go with this. So let's just extend these lines a little bit. And we have P or Q. So we're gonna assume P, we're gonna assume Q, and we're gonna see what happens. So in eight, we have P. Well, we have P arrow R, and this is from line six. So we're just gonna reiterate it. Then if we have P arrow R and P, we can get R. So uh, that's from eight and nine, and that's modus ponens. You might also know this as conditional elimination. In line 11, we assume Q. We need to show R in this too. So we have Q arrow R that we can take from uh, line seven. We can reiterate it in. We can apply modus ponens and get R out. So in, uh, what is it, 11 and 12, we use modus ponens. So now at this point, We've gotten R in eight through 10 and 11 through 13. So we can pull R out because either disjunct is gonna give us R. So our label for this would be eight to 10, 11 to 13. Uh, this is or elimination. It's going to be on line 14. And then on line 15, we can close that proof. 
can finally bring our box out to R, and this is going to be from four all the way to 14, box introduction. And we can see that this subproof starts there, it starts with the box, ends with an R. We stick them together when we get out. So that is just a couple proofs with system K. There's not much to be added yet, but we'll see diamonds in the next video and that will make things just a little bit more complicated.